Entity Component Systems, IDs, Data, and Logic. An ECS, or an Entity Component System, is a design approach which separates entities, IDs, components, data, and systems, logic, from each other. One way you can implement an entity component system would be to create a long list of components. This list will store different kinds of components and will execute code for each of these components. The code that will be executed can either be inside systems or it can be inside the components itself. For simple code, you can just put it inside the component or if you want to remain to have a pure ECS approach, you put it in systems all of the code and components remain only data. Let's look at a visual representation of an entity component system. Here we have our player character, this little plane, and this plane needs a direction in which it flies. So I'll just draw in this little arrow which represents the vector direction and then the player also needs a position component otherwise we won't know where it is and this component will be represented by this x and y in brackets now the sprite will also refer to this position so you can sometimes put reference, references to other components inside components otherwise you will sit with spaghetti code for example with this sprite it will refer to the position component so that you know where to draw the sprite another way you can implement an ECS when you often reference certain components is you can create an entity class that contains these references. For example, NES, a very popular extension library for Mono game, uses this paradigm. So in its entity class, it contains the entity's position among other data. It is not a pure ECS approach, but it is often very helpful. So if you'd like to use an entity component system, you don't want to build your own yet or you just want to look at how it can be done i would recommend you check out simple ECS show by prime ferber the github repo link will be in the description so i'll just dem quickly demonstrate how you can use this library let's open your code editor i'll just use visual studio code and i'll quickly Oh, let's, let's just reopen this. There we go. I'll quickly clone the repository. So it will be git clone. Just copy that link. Simple easy show. So copy the link, paste it. Now make your directory where you want your game or if you already have the directory just cd into it so i'll quickly make a my game directory so the game will be let's go into the directory there we go and create a new project let's talk to our project this will be called just take the default name Okay, let's make sure everything is correct. So we'll get both to compile the code and don't need to run. There you go. Okay. Now you want to add a reference to the simple ECS sharp library that you want to use. So just say dot net add reference simple ECS sharp simple. 
I just want the location where the file is stored. In this case, it's just one directory up. So there we add the reference. Now it won't show errors when you use functions from the line or methods. Let's close all these pop-ups. So now we can just say using ECS, simple ECS. There we go. Okay. Like I explained in the beginning of the video, you, an entity component system can be implemented using a list of components. In the case of simple ECSSHA, this will be a registry. It will contain all the components in a sparse set, and it provides extra functionality like sorting and grouping components. So let's just create this registry, private registry, just call it registry. You need to initialize this by providing the maximum entities you want in your scene. So we'll say new registry, for the sake of it, we're just going to use 100 entities. Okay, so far so good. Now, we'll create a sprite component. So we'll just use a public struct. You can either use a struct or a class. Structs are passed by what's it passed by value and not passed by reference by default. So you need ex extra keywords such as out to pass by reference. Classes in C sharp are always passed by reference. So if you'd like less wording, it's better to use classes. But structs are fine. So private struct, sprite, this will be our, not sprite dash, this will be our sprite component. So we want the texture of the sprite to be accessible from everywhere. So we'll say public texture 2D, texture. And we want to receive this texture when we create the component, a new instance of the component. So we'll just say texture 2D, texture, initialize the texture of the struct. So this texture equals texture. There we go. Okay. So you can either put your draw code separately from the sprite, or you can just include inside the component itself. Although it's not a pure ECS approach, it makes it much easier to just draw it inside the component. So we'll just make this method public void draw. We'll take in the sprite bash. So once we've got draw, sprite bash. This is a reference, so we use the underscore. Now we can just say sprite bash dot draw texture. For now, we're just going to create a custom destination rectangle. This will be in the top left corner and will be a 10 by 10 square. Later on, you want to add the destination rectangle or the vector to position in the sprite itself. But for now, this is fine. We'll just use new rectangle 0, 0, 10, we don't want any color filters, so we'll just use color.white. That means no filters. There we go. Now we will need to create a player entity. So this will be entity, player entity. Equals registry, create. Now the registry will create an entity for us. This will probably be zero or one depending if what the registry decides, uh, probably one, zero, sorry. But you don't have to know this. You, maybe you saw this in a script somewhere, but you don't need to know the actual value. We put it inside load content because we want to load the texture first. Otherwise, the texture is not going to be loaded and it will be null and monogame will complain or .NET will complain. So let's make Texture, layer texture, and load it from content. So, content load. 
well done with type of file this will be a texture 2d file and the name of this file will be block.png however mono game or x and a converts files into x and b format so it will no longer be block of png it will be block of x and b but we don't have to put that there since content already knows this so you can just put block and no extension now this will give us an error if we try to run it since we don't have the texture in here as you can see no texture so i'll just open gimp for the sake of it you can also use a sprite or any other software that can edit images Let's create a new image. Mine will be a 10 by 10 square. Okay. And we will just fill it with this red color and export the file as a PNG. Let's just go to tutorials and put the C sharp. There we go. And put it in. No, sorry, not in C sharp. My game. Put it in content. We don't want to save this since I'm not going to use it ever again. So just discard changes. You can use GIMP if you'd like, it's free and it's open source. Okay, now we want to load it. So I'm just going to use the MGBC, MGCB editor to load it into our project. You can just add it inside the MGCB file, but we're just not going to do that now. There we go. So add existing item. This is oh I forgot to rename it. So well, let's just rename it before we use it. Otherwise it's not gonna work. Block of PNG. There we go. And existing item. Block of PNG. There we go. And save. So just close. I'm just gonna clear my terminal. So it's nice. Let's make sure everything is correct. Dot net boat. Okay, everything is correct. Nothing is drawn yet since we haven't made a draw call. Now we want to add this sprite component to our player entity. So we will say registry dot add component what which entity do we want to add it to we want to add it to the player entity what type of component would it be it would be a sprite component so we just create the new sprite component here this will be layer texture there we go let's make sure this is a reference okay yes it's correct okay now if you look in the simple EC sharp library you will see that there aren't really any systems already provided but if you read program.cs you would see how to use it so the paradigm that is used in simple EC sharp is you get the list of your entities that contain the component that you'd like so this will be this is a view so let's get the view this is registry dot okay, view what component would we like to see we would like to see sprite components so we would like to see sprite components this will give us references to each entity or ids to each entity that has a sprite component so now we will loop through every entity so for each var e this is entity in view we want to get that entity's component Right component, so we just see get component right and what entity this will be e and we want to draw it. Wait, 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 sorry, draw. So we're just gonna use our current sprite patch. There we go. Okay, mono game is going to complain that we haven't called sprite patch dot begin. Neither did we call, nor did we call sprite patch dot end. So just put that in here too. So sprite patch dot begin. We're outside our loop since 
we will draw everything in the loop after pull and begin. We don't have to do pull begin every time we draw, just beforehand. And afterwards, you have to pull end. So front patch of end. And now everything should be working. So dot net bolt and dot net run. There you go. See our little square. It's right there. That means everything is working. Now using this paradigm, you can create multiple components for multiple entities. If you'd like to group entities or components together, like you'd want an input component and the sprite component, you would not necessarily use view, but like you'd use group. So then we don't have to use like the player ID. We can just say registry.group by sprite and input. Then we know it's a player. And we can use that those IDs provided by registry to do something for each player. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you understand how to use this library.